Hello everybody, my name is Josh Korb and what I'm going to do today is talk to you about informal assessment in the math classroom and some of the tools that I use in my math classroom today that might be helpful for you in the future. So let's begin. So why is informal assessment so important? And the way that I'm going to answer this is by using uh, two quotes. And this first one is really sp speaking to the idea that is more important to use formative assessment along the way than just relying on summative assessments at the very end, a test or a project. So when the cook tastes the soup, that's formative. When the guest tastes the soup, that is summative. So when we're talking about the cook here, we're talking about obviously the teacher. Assessing our students' knowledge along the way is more important than when we get to the test at the very end because that informal assessment, anyway, is going to prove to be very useful when we're preparing for our summative assessments uh, towards the end. So informal assessment has to happen continuously for this process to be successful. And that brings us to our next quote, and that is, students need endless feedback more than they need endless teaching. So yes, we can teach and teach and teach and provide our students with all the opportunities to learn, but the problem is if we never assess along the way before we get to that formal assessment at the very end or summative assessment, we'll never know or never have a clue what those students know or don't know. So informal assessment ideas. So here are just uh, some that I've pulled from the Internet um, and also I, I've done in my own classroom as well. So we can talk about observations. Obviously, just seeing our students in their natural habitat, quote unquote, is very important in gathering information and, and gathering that formative assessment detail. Questioning our students and having discussions with our students are very important as well. Um, we can also do exit slips, uh, admit slips. So when they come into class, they do something as a warm up. Um, journaling, graphic organizers, whiteboards, think, pair, share, all of these are fantastic informal assessments that I use um, on a daily basis, a weekly basis. I'm pulling these constantly into my instruction, and I'm constantly looking at my students and saying, okay, where are we at right now, and where we need to go, and where have we been? So this brings us to the question, what about technology? So that brings us to the top four inform informal assessments that I use technology with in my classroom. The first one is Plickers. Plickers is an awesome way to assess a student's knowledge instantaneously, um, gather uh, formative assessment feedback instantly, and without technology. There's only one device that's needed, and that's the teachers. So I'll use my phone, and I'll stand up at the, at the front of the class. All my students will have these little cards, these Plickers, that they're going to use that they're just going to hold up. They hold them up. I get that instant feedback on my phone, and it's very responsive. So this is a great tool to use in your classroom, especially if you're not one-to-one -one with devices or have limited devices. Uh, Plickers is the way to go. So Plickers is a classroom response app that teachers can use very easily without having devices for each student. A great, great tool to use. I use them um, probably two or three times a week just to grab, gather in, um, instantaneous data for my students. Socrative is another one that is, is huge. Um, I've been using this for a long time, probably three plus years um, since the birth of it. Uh, so Socrative is, or Socrative, sorry, is a classroom app for effective classroom engagement and can be a quick response system. Um, so basically, we have our students on their one-to-one -one devices. We're Chromebooks in my district, and we will have, um, we have quizzes, we have space races, but we can share this information with other teachers as well. So we have a Socrative code, an SOC code, that we can share amongst the math teachers in our department, so we can all benefit from this. We can all use the same quizzes. We can all use um, the same space race adventures for our students, um, and it's just a great way to get some feedback from our students instantly and along the way. And it's uh, you can either do teams, you can do individual, you can have the students um, be shown the correct answer, or you can go over it at, at a classroom pace. So it's a great tool to use. Kahoot is probably one that you've heard resonating through the hallways because it has swept the country and especially my classroom in a way that students absolutely love Kahoot. Um, it, this is a game-based learning platform, a, a lot like Socrative and a lot like uh, Plickers, we're, but we're throwing this game aspect into it, this competitive nature. So you have students join with a game pin with no accounts needed, um, and you just start playing. Um, so it's usually multiple choice, so you can have true and false in there, but it's a, it's a very fun and easy platform to use for you as a teacher and for your students to use as well. So if you haven't heard of it, you're living under a rock. So Kahoot is awesome for uh, formative assessment. And lastly, my number one top tool, especially if you're in a flipped classroom or blended learning atmosphere or hybrid learning atmosphere, Edpuzzle is the way to go. When you want to get 
individualized instruction for your students, but also have your students be checked along the way of the video. Rather than just waiting to the end, they come to class the next day, you ask, hey kids, what did you learn? You can assess this instantaneously within the video. So you embed questions, you embed audio, you can embed just comments for your students to read during the video to get the most out of it. The other nice feature here too is that um, it, it forces your students to watch it. It doesn't allow them to skip ahead. It doesn't allow them to skip questions. They need to answer the question correctly in order to move on. So they can go back, rewatch the video, and the data that comes from this is amazing as well. As your students are watching it, you can see how much they've watched or how many times they watched a certain section. Or you can see um, what questions they got right. Uh, you can also do uh, short answers where you can go in and correct your students' responses as well. A great tool to use. There's amazing resources here. You can pull from a ton of different platforms, and it's just a, an all-around inclusive tool for formative assessment. So Edpuzzle is my number one top pick. Here are the links to the resources for Edpuzzle, Socrative, Flickers, and Kahoot. Um, so if you'd like to click on these links, you can. I'll share this video with you or share this presentation with you as well. And thank you for watching. This has been Josh Korb. If you have any questions, feel free to um, hit me up on Twitter at Mr. J. Korb or via email, Mr. J. Korb at gmail.com. We've talked about formative assessments and just some top four key ones that I use in my classroom. And I hope this has been helpful. All right. I will see you later.